here, and I'm going to get a frame that has a queen on it, and a frame of cat brood, and a frame of honey, and maybe another frame of brood, okay? Frame with a queen or a queen cell? I'm going to get the queen, okay? okay. I'll leave the queen cells here. And I'm going to put the queen and, and that stuff in this box right here, okay? One of the unique things about bee behavior is any bee that has ever left this colony is a forager, and it's going to go back to this colony. So when I move this over here, the nurse bees with the queen have never left they're going to stay with the queen over here. But any forager that I moved over on a frame is going to come back here. All right? So, I go in there, I do that, and, and then this colony has the queen cells, and I go in and, and leave all but one or two of the queen cells in here. All right? So that's, in this fifth cap, that's day nine, correct? Now they do it right before this nectar flow. Typically, if they do it on their own, that's when the ideal situation is, and when they started running out of room. So if at day nine I've had the cat queen cell, in another week, that, that queen is going to emerge in here. In another four or five days, every cell in there is going to be capped. Okay? And if there's all cat cells in there and there's no queen, those are two big pheromone situations that with, without having uncapped brood, the bees that are in this colony aren't going to go out and get nectar like they normally would. They don't have brood to feed because the cells are all capped. They don't have a queen yet. She's being developed and then getting mated. So all of our foragers, a ton of foragers are in here. And we've got a nectar flow coming. And they're not out getting honey. I've got the queen over here, and she's just got nurse bees. It doesn't have foragers to go out and bring back the amount of honey that she's capable of laying eggs to support, if that makes sense. She's waiting. If she had... The foragers in this hive, she would lay like crazy because you know when you catch a swarm, many times that's the colony that makes honey for you that year. So what I do after the ninth day when the cells are all capped and brood cells are all capped there in here is I move this box over here and I'll take the queen and move here back over here, okay? So now my queen is over here in this location, and this box is over here. You follow me? Yes, Tim? What time of day do you do that? It doesn't matter. Because the foragers are all going to come back to this location. Can you do that at night? Yeah, if you needed to. It's better to do it during the day, I would think, but I don't think it'll matter much. So what happens the next day is you've got, to, you've got to make sure when you do this and you move this colony here and put that colony here, every forager that was over here is going to come back to the queen. She's going to have a ton of help to bring pollen back. This hive will make honey for you this year. Does it make sense? Who no. says no? I did, sir. So... You're talking about a bee. I'm talking about taking this five frame nuke. Okay. Before I move it, the queen's in here. She's been in here a week. There's no cat brood over here, and there's just a ton of bees. Right. They're waiting for a queen. It's going to be two or three more weeks, and we're going to lose the nectar flow. Okay. So I'll put this in an eight frame or ten frame in another box, because I'm going to take this box and put it over here, okay. and I'll when these bees, when, and then this box will be put here. So you're switching locations. Switching locations. So all every the forager, forager is going to come back to this location, and it's going to fill up the oh. hive with a queen in it. Okay. okay. Is there a minimum space you need between the, uh, between the boxes? No, they, they know. 
and, and that, Gary asked, is there a minimum space? If you want to see something unique, and this is how smart they are, is that if this is the front of your hive, and you have an entrance reducer on it, and the entrance reducer is on this side, just turn it around one day and put it on that side, They'll all come to this hole trying to figure out why they can't get in. And it takes them about two hours to figure out they have to go down there. <laughs> think about it. If you go back to the books and there's millions of trees out there in the forest, how do they know which one to go to? I mean, that's how they survive. Their, their GPS is amazing. So you had a queen cell in that box. And this over here now. So is there no queen yet? Well, she, no, not then. It's going to be a week before that queen gets mated. She's never left here, so when she goes out on the mating flight, she's going to be leaving from here and come back here. But when you move this box over to that one, the queen will already have emerged? No, I, I did that before she emerges. Before she emerges okay. But it really works well. Any other doubters, questions? <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter. No. Now, what you have to be careful of when you make this up initially and you put the queen over here is you have to shake a lot of bees from this hive into here because you need a lot of young bees because they're the only ones that are going to stay here because they've never left this hive. They know when they leave here eventually they'll come back to this one. Yes, sir. Unless you don't have any queen cells when you're doing this maneuver. That's, well, that's a different thing. Okay? <laughs> I mean, you would, they would make their own queen cell just be another week longer. And so after the ninth day, you can do the same thing. That wouldn't really change. Yes, Ricky? I have two more questions. Uh, when you do your split the first time, No, sir. Had nurse bees with the queen. Right. So to keep to get more nurse bees in there, not have to shake some more bees in there, but you may have to. You do it in the middle of the day while the foragers are still flying, so you get more work than okay. you do foragers. Right, and 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 that's because when you shake the bees here, and you have a third of the half the colony out foraging, you're going to be ratio wise, you're going to be putting more nurse bees in here. Okay. The second question is, did you switch those boxes the last time? Mm -hmm. Before you move that big hive over where the queen was, should you go in there and make sure that queen's laying before you move? No, you, you don't want her laying yet. You don't. Uh, you do that beforehand because you want to catch the nectar flow. You've got to get this built up well. Okay. Well, what I was trying to get at, you don't want the queen out with her uh, making plot. You do, you do it a week after you do the switch. Or she after, should be yeah, after you pull the queen in. Good. Yes. If you shake off an open brood, would you be more likely to get um, nurse bees? If you, if, when you're pulling frames out to look for well, bees, well, that's the frame. Shake. Yeah, that's the frame you would move over. That's the frame you would move over. And I guess one last thing that was mentioned in the book is that when you pull the frame out, and if you look here, the, these cells are at an angle, and if it's during the nectar flow and you're in the high for some reason. You want to be real careful because if you tilt that, there's a lot of water in that honey. And you're going to have nectar all over your pants. <laughs> all right? you, you, I mean, it's going to run out. It's not, it's not sticky like um, dehydrated nectar. All right. Well, that, and really, those things are... Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes? I just want to hear the ratio again of uh, the box that you're putting the old queen in. Put in two frames of it's in the book. It, <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah. really. Well, okay. no, it's increased essentials. He goes into okay. detail. How much are these? 20, 
21 or 23. Yeah. No, really, I'm not being smart, but I, I know at the B school that I showed the thing, and it's how fast you want it to build up is how many frames in cat brood, and it'll give you how many weeks that colony is, is going to take for that colony to get up to 60,000 bees. So, yeah, the cost of buying that book and learning more about it versus the cost of just going out and buying a new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y